form as exponential growth. There's a difference, there's a notational difference. If you're comfortable with what we've done lately, this will not necessarily take all that long or be all that hard for your brains to absorb. If you haven't been paying attention, this will seem brand new and kind of frightening, so I hope it won't. Exponential growth, we said yesterday, was of the form y equals a times some number raised to an exponent, and we added the minus k and plus h. The simplest form, we said, was just y equals some number raised to an exponent, okay? That's exponential growth. <coughs> exponential decay, in its simplest form, has one of two ways you can look at it. And they're really the same thing. First one is y equals a fraction less than 1 raised to a power. That's supposed to be a letter N. It's any number. Now, there are actually things you can put down here, like other fractions, where this would be bigger than one. But I'm going to say where n is an integer here. This will give you exponential decay. There's another way to write this, which is y equals some number raised to the negative x. I did not mean to make that a 2. I meant to make that an n. I was skipping ahead in my head to my next example. Okay, so that's y equals n to the negative x. What's the difference between these two things? Nothing. Just notation. They're the same exact thing. We need to learn to live with and love both of them. I have a question. Yes. When you go on YouTube, what, what do you type in? You know, you go to my website, and there's a link there. There's both a link and an embedded video on the website where you get homework. Okay, so just go to your website. Yeah, just go to my website, and you'll see it there. Okay. Um, okay, so, now with the uh, decay, let's do an example of this. We'll start with that table again. 2 to the negative x. How else can I write that? Uh, two ways, actually, that's right. 1 over 2 to the x, or 1 half raised to the x. Because it doesn't matter what x is, if you raise 1 to an exponent, you're going to just get 1 over and over again. If you write it this way, it's easier to keep track of what your rate of decay is. Let's make the table we made yesterday. What three points did I say I wanted you to start with yesterday? <laughs> Very quick, Saul. <laughs> Very quick. Now, for this one, okay, when x is negative 1, put a negative 1 in for x, what is 2 raised to the negative Negative 1. 2. 2. It's 2 to the 1. Just equals 2. What is anything <coughs> raised to the 0 power? 1. 1. And what is 2 to the negative 1? Negative 2. Nope. 2 raised to the negative 1 power. What does a negative exponent mean again? Oh, it's 1 half. 1 half. Flip the fraction. Make it positive. So it's 1 over 2 to the first power. Okay. Notice that the simplest form of all of these exponential graphs always pass through 0, 1. When we add shifts, that stops working. But, okay, I'm going to put these points in. Here's negative 1, here's 0, here's 1. At negative 1, this we have the point negative 1, 2. Remember, if you label your points carefully, I'll be forgiving if your graph is ugly. If you don't label your points, I won't give you credit. So this is 1, 1 half. And my graph's going to look something like this. The line y equals 0, which is the x-axis, is still an asymptote, which I know I'm mispronouncing. What is an asymptote again? It's the line where the one almost touches but never really does. So, yeah, it's the line that the function approaches, keeps getting closer, keeps almost touching, 
never actually does. Until you get to a calculus course and you talk about something called limits out to infinity. And until then, you don't worry about it. Okay, so y equals zero is still an asymptote, but this time it's an asymptote in the positive x direction. A good friend of mine at another school says that exponential growth is an airplane taking off. An exponential decay is an airplane coming in for a landing. But never actually landing. It's kind of how you feel at some major airports when there's backup of the runways. You just circle forever and ever and never land. Um, I hate airplanes. Anyway. Why? I'll tell you later. Um, y equals zero is still an asymptote. Now we have decay. Shifts work the same way as yesterday. Okay? The shifting, let me make sure I pronounce that correctly. Shifting is the same way you still have f of x equals some number a times n raised to the x minus k power plus h. Okay, if you're putting this in your calculator, you have to make sure you use the hatch mark and parentheses here. Pardon? Okay. Yeah, that's the same thing. As, this is exactly the same as we did yesterday. And again, you have to be able to recognize that this is the offspring. I'm staying away from gender terms. Not the mommy, I was using mommy, daddy, son, daughter yesterday. Um, this is the offspring of a simpler function, which I'll call g of x equals n to the x. Just the base, just the exponent without the shift. And then you use the simpler one to graph it. I'll do an example of a relatively ugly one of these, and I don't think I signed any word problems tonight, so that may be it. And you guys can start the homework in class or catch up on last night's homework for those of you who had observances. Um, I wanted to give you time for that and not do too much today. Okay, so if you guys can handle this graph, you can be done fairly quickly. f of x equals, it's a reasonable amount of ugliness for this. Actually, help me make up one. It's got to be exponential decay, and I want an a, a k, and an h. If it's exponential decay, you have to remember something about n. Help me make up this example we're about to graph. 2, 4. 2, 4, where? Okay, we still need an h and an n. Well, remember though that's ah, but if you if you make n a regular integer, you'll have exponential exponential growth. We don't need this to be exponential decay. So what do you have to do with n? Negative. Not negative. Uh -huh. One half. That's the simplest one. Or one third. So it's x minus. I'm forgetting what he said. Uh, three. Plus what? Four. Well, plus four here. James, you've been outvoted. Apparently. Does that one third become negative or no? The one third doesn't become negative. It would become negative as in, uh, what's it called? It had a square root thing, right? Uh, no, that would become fractional. Here's what, um, the other way to write this is you can put make the three into a normal number and make the exponent negative. Okay? Here's what, with the x minus three, it's a little bit trickier, but what Saul's thinking of is that one third to the x minus 4 power is the same thing as 3 to the negative x minus 4 power. Because a negative exponent always means flip the fraction and make the exponent positive. Or you could say a positive exponent means flip the fraction and make the exponent negative. You can do it in either direction. This is the only way negatives apply here. Does that make sense? Okay, we're not going to Worry about that. All right, what is the parent function? Three. Mommy or daddy function, depending on which you refer to. Parent function is what? Three. Nope. The whole function. What's the simplest way? What are the most important things between the 2 times 1 third to the x minus 3 plus 4? What are the most important ideas going on? 1 to the third x. Yep. 1 third raised to the x power. The base 